So on this quick tip, we're just going to show you how to um, take Alembic information from your 3D package, in this case 3D Max, into UE4. So on 4.13, Alembic import was added. Um, it's still an ongoing uh, project, um, but it works pretty good for, for what it is for the first implementation. So Alembic is pretty much an open source code that allows the transference of um, baked vertex animation data um, you know between any application that the plugin is is um, compiled for or um, specifically written for so that's quite handy because you couldn't obviously do that before in UE and um, you'd have to um, rig and skin even a simple example like this that I'm going to use this bouncing ball and um, you'd have to rig and skin it to bring it in so now you can um, take vertex animation baked it's baked geometry information um, animation information that just gets transferred across so you don't have to worry about um, rigging or skinning so this example here is um, <laughs> it's uh, just a simple bouncing ball um, I won't be getting called by Pixar anytime soon but it's just for the example it took me a couple of minutes so um, it's going to do the job so basically all it is it's just um, a simple sphere that are just keyframed and um, just scaled non-uniformly for a little bit of squash and stretch or whatever so as I said couple of minutes um, so don't laugh right so you just select your um, your object and this can be multiple objects um, so um, you, you for multiple objects you just select them all as you would for an FBX file if you wanted them on the same file and just export them and obviously only the um, the importer in Unreal is going to um, read that data and only verts that have been transformed are obviously going to animate so you could have like a door frame and a door and only the door will be opening or animating and the frame will be static so just select it and the max it's just export selected and then just uh, alembic.abc is the file type and then just um, click on it and the options are quite limited there's a lot more in Maya and um, there used to be a, a panda I think or what was it called oh, I can't remember exo cortex or something was the plugin for Max but um, it's this one has been built into Max now in the last couple of versions so there's not that many uh, options you're pr pretty much just going to be leaving everything as is I think this is this HDF5 is newer than this Ogawa one I'm not too sure so um, just leave it at that and then you just click OK and then over in Unreal I'm just gonna grab that file that ABC file and just drag it across and now your Alembic import options are gonna come up so there's three different ones the static mesh which is um, you can import individual frames and you can see here if this was multiple meshes they'd be in a list here and you could choose to import them or not import them uh, or you can merge them here so as I said you can you can import single frames so you, you might have a, a big simulation that you've simulated it would have destroyed building and, and you could just pick a, a one frame from that animation and import it then as a kind of a static mesh asset and unfortunately um, th they've had to work some magic as they're implementing this because the Lembic is quite limited with smoothing groups and that so um, there's a bit of messing around here depends on how your asset comes in and the next one then is geometry cache this is experimental so it can crash um, but it works pretty well here for a simple sort of stuff and I haven't had that much problems I have had problems if, if you've got bad geometry or whatever um, so just look out for that like end guns or whatever so there's not many options here it's just going to be your start and end frame which is 0 and 27 over in max and the last one then is skeletal which is as you might have guessed skeletal mesh so you get all those options that you would get with a skeletal mesh and you'll also get three files and files imported here when you use that the thing about this then as well is you could bring simulations across it it doesn't have to be like a character it can be anything and then it's it's basically working on morph targets so 
if 100% the total base it's going to bring in a morph target for each frame and morph between those per frame here so you can set up these different options and for the moment I'm just going to bring in uh, the geometry cache experimental import and drag it into the scene and I'll just scale it up a bit one thing to know because of the nature of the importer and this has changed in 414 I believe I'm still on 413 um, it's to do with world uh, coordinates between the different software so it always comes in here from max on its side so it's just a matter of um, minus 90 on the x-axis and that'll straighten it up but I think as I, as I said that's fixed in 414 so that's pretty much it there now and you can just um, it doesn't run in real time here in the editor so you just have to um, just click run in here as you normally would and then looping is on here as well and I'll play it there and there's the animation plane the viewport just looping so that's the experimental geometry cache and I'll just delete that and re-import it again and I'll just show you the skeletal mesh so I'll just switch over to skeletal and I'll just leave all these as is and you can open up the animation and as I said it's it's on its side it's on X on its side and if you get this weird error here um, it just means that that world grid material needs to be changed because the morph target doesn't support it so you can just um, change it there and just apply that save it and that error goes away and then we can just bring this in and then you have to do the same thing so I'll just oops so maybe I'll just scale that up and the same again minus 90 and there we go and all I did then in, in, in the intro animation um, you can just offset you can just clone a couple of them out here and you can just offset these then so it's 8.5 and 0.2 and then when you play it it'll just be slightly offset so I'm not too sure um, I haven't worked out how to use collision there's a there's an option for uh, per poly collision but I haven't been able to get it to work so for instance an example of where you might use these let's say they were going to be an enemy in the game or this could be, you know, fallen, um, you know, fucking axes or something, or, you know, swinging sharp axe pendulums or something like that. Um, and they could be in sequence here swinging, and, you you know, you have to run past them. Old skill sort of um, traps. So what you might do in that case is just set up um, collision boxes, and then if you enter the collision box, you, you get dead. Um, so that's how that could be implemented and that's pretty much the basics of it so I would advise jumping across here it's always first part to call for any application I use if I'm having if I want to know something I just go to the, the documents first and then I'll go from there but I'll, the Unreal documents are, are really really good they're extensive they're updated uh, quite regularly and they explain things very well um, visual examples and everything and in this case I'd advise if you're interested in this Alembic uh, watch this uh, twitch stream and these lads uh, go into it in detail and this is one of the developers of the plugin so um, definitely worth a look and definitely worth a read alright then hope this was useful cheers thanks good luck